Well, good morning <laughs> from Coolum Beach in Queensland, Australia. Today's a massive day. Now, a lot of you won't realise, uh, well, you know, members of the course will re recognise that I haven't really been. Here's the, here's the background. It's quite a beautiful place. Um, we'll not we'll recognise that I haven't been around the course very much. Uh, in the last, well, let's say, six months. And the reason for that, obviously, is the COVID thing, and I didn't want to get on and make a big deal about all of that. Uh, plus, those of you that watch my YouTube channel will know that my dear mum's been very sick, and they managed to come up here from Victoria and visit for two weeks and ended up staying here three and a half months, and she's very unwell, but at least we got to have family time together. Uh, so over this time, I've been doing probably the biggest research project that I've ever done, and that's outside Trumpet, and I want to introduce you to it all now. You've probably seen on the forum that I did uh, left-handed golf, and I uh, had an injury, so I started, just started to feel the club and, you know, start playing a few little, you know, swings left-handed, and then... Uh, I basically busted my leg and was out for 12 months. So I got back into it March this year. And then over the last three months, I've been in full immersion. So I'm using my golf education, being a student again, absolute hack beginner. And I've teamed up with a PGA Tour professional up here in Queensland, and we're putting some resources together. So what am I rambling about? Uh, immersion, repetition, how to how to create new neural pathways, how to create new habits to get better at what we're doing. Let me just jump forward and say today I'm playing left-handed and starting a four-day golf tournament up here on the Sunshine Coast. Yes, I am playing a four-day golf tournament left-handed. Am I any good? No, but I'm getting better. <laughs> now, have a look at this. This is my balcony. you're going to do something you might as well get into it now that's a sheet and I hit foam you've got foam practice balls here of which I've hit oh, I can't I'm not doing this very well uh, there it is and I've hit lots of them and lots of them and then I've got my iPad stand here and a mirror there is a term called um, an illusion of competence. <laughs> we think we know what we're doing, whether it's trumpet, any physical act really, but definitely golf. And if you're not into golf, I understand, you're like, what are you rambling about? But there are the elements in a good golf swing and the elements in brass playing. There are lots and lots and lots of parallels that I'm gonna be talking a lot about in, in the future now that life's slowly kind of getting back to some degree of normality. But I, the main purpose of this exercise is to, you know, as a 49 year old guy deciding to play golf left-handed, is to do an experiment. How do the neuroplasticity things work? How do, how do we create new habits? How many repetitions does it take for the body to do something that it's not used to doing? And it was interesting there just getting up, I'm about to do some practice and some alignment. It's all geometry, it's all just learning what the body needs to do, it's all new to me. And it reminded me of before gigs, getting there and, and, and playing up and down the register to make sure the notes were there. I'm not sure in any particular gig whether I'm gonna be able to play the way that I wanna be able to play. And then over the years and practice and things like that, you don't worry about that. You do a bit of a warm up, you turn up, it doesn't matter what the music is, you can pretty much play it. But it is not the same with golf, let me tell you. I've gotta micromanage every part of it on the balcony then I take what I learn on the balcony to the driving range and then when I'm on the golf course I really don't think about it. And uh, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll take two elements to, um, to the course if I need to, just to remind me of things that I'm working on but we don't want to get caught up on the technical, uh, there's too many mechanics going on, too many elements, you can't focus on them all. So that's what the balcony, the driving range are all about and most importantly and this will um, disturb a few people but watching the golf swing 
watching people. Now, if you're playing and you you want to improve your playing, watch a lot of players. Now, I don't mean from that to copy the angle of the horn and if one person puffs their cheek out or screws their nose up or anything. You don't want to be doing that. But you want to find efficient players. I don't watch uh, energetic players. I don't watch the dudes that are massive swings and bulked up muscle and hitting the ball a billion miles. I'm watching the Korean ladies PGA, <laughs> right? Because they've got the most technically perfect swings you'll ever see. And I'm modeling my swing on efficiency. Surprise, surprise. And what I've learned, the coffee moments, I'll have to come up with another term for the golf course, but, but the moments that I've had in refining the swing, seeing how things eventually stick and see them trigger automatically is unbelievable. And I'm very, very, very inconsistent, yet I've hit a drive 275 meters. My putting is awful. That's one thing that I'm working on at the moment. I can't work on that here but I can work on it um, in, in, on the carpet inside, but more on the practice green, so I'm spending more time now. Um, for those of you that join, just hello, thanks for watching. Um, I'm playing a left-handed golf tournament starting today for four days. I will be the worst player on the course, but it's not about that, there's no ego attached. It's an experiment to get out there, immerse yourself in what you're doing, go and hang out with great players and just you know, we take any ego out of the way, any emotion out of the way, and get out and and have a bit of a crack at playing golf, playing trumpet, not taking things too seriously, but being very serious about it, and very much learning new skills. So the the reason that I'm sort of standing here waffling today is just to mark the fact that over the the months of you know what's been going on around the world, uh, I haven't been snoring and just uh, hibernating. I've been very proactive. That's just a sheet that I had printed up. Even though my view was actually fairly, fairly nice up here, I'm very lucky. But uh, it's all been the most extensive um, research project that I've ever done, and I'm, I'm astounded at the results. Um, three months immersion with lessons. There's a thing called X Golf where we play inside, and it's got launch monitors and simulators and everything I'm studying it because I'm serious about learning it not for golf's sake I don't really care about golf I like getting out there and having a hit but it's a complex complicated difficult game and the main message is people do not understand the amount of repetitions that are required to learn a new skill whether it's brass playing or or golf or whatever the repetition and the roller coaster of emotions I'm th thankfully lucky that I don't get frustrated if I hit a ball along the ground and goes into water, when I was practicing one day, I hit seven balls in a river, one after the other, but each one got closer to the fairway. <laughs> and it didn't register because there's no point being emotional um, when you know, you're not professional. And when you're professional, you, you put your, your, for our sake, your emotions into your music. Technical side of playing, we don't want to think about. So the repetition that is required to get the body to do something it's not nat naturally inclined to do. And then the to make it consistent, I can hit fantastic golf balls, but not all the time. And so today it's just a matter of warm up, you know, get my alignment, I sit there, use the mirror of course, so I know what I'm doing, no, no illusion of competence, meaning I think I know what I'm doing and actually I'm not. And you see that everywhere. Go to any driving range and five people out of 10 have no idea what they're doing. And occasionally, I got lucky yesterday, there were three people, all with perfect swings, and oh, perfect, but fantastic swings, so I'm watching them. But I learn as much from watching people that have no idea what they're doing. Um, anyhow, I just thought I'd flag this with you all, and I will do an update <laughs> this afternoon, and then on Thursday, if, you're, if you are into golf and you're wondering, when I first got my handicap, I was, I was hitting, for 18 holes, about 135 shots, which is a lot. And then I'm bringing it down. Uh, I started when I, I remember breaking 70, then I remember breaking 60 for nine holes. And then last week I broke 50, and I'm a better golfer now than I ever was right handed. Um, my handicap's 36, uh, 37, I think, but it'll be 36 in the comp, and I plan on having it to 18 by the end of November. 
So we'll see how that goes. It's probably ambitious, but there's nothing wrong with a bit of ambition and enthusiasm. Whilst if that doesn't happen, that doesn't matter. But um, getting out there, it's a um, stable foot event. So, which means if you have a bad hole, you can just ride it off. So that suits me perfectly. Um, and I'm just documenting everything. I've filmed everything. I'm filming the process of practice. I'm filming how we think we're doing things and we're not. Uh, there's a lot of call analysis to come. It's a lot of work, but it's been very fruitful and it's helped me with my teaching. I'm teaching a lot of people online, of course. And what I've learned from being the student again, the parallels between what I see people struggle with on the instrument and how they're approaching practice and uh, the you know, things that they could be doing better are profound. Um, I'm going to redo the Largo stage. I'm missing a lot of points there. What do I need as the student is what I've learned. I need to get my head into the... And it doesn't matter what level student, whether you're a professional player or a complete beginner, it's about what do you need? What, what, how are we going to get tangible results? This is the question. And what I've learned getting my way, my PGA... Um, we're doing a thing called Hack Pro Golf that's coming up. There you go. Um, and here's a standard at the speed at which I'm developing because I'm immersed in it. I'm watching, I'm practicing, I'm repeating, and the results come over time, but no expectation. I don't know what's going to happen today. It doesn't matter. It's going to be fun. Um, so, uh, in a way, I apologise for not having a greater presence around Windworks in the course, but as I said at the start, things have been more than just a little chaotic. Um, but there is plenty of cool stuff to come, so stand by and uh, thank you for being part of Windworks and I um, will let you know how I go this afternoon. Have a great day.